get ready for the 3,000 meter steeplechase collegiate and NCAA meet record held by Jenny Berenger Simpson. She's also the American record holder. And Courtney Freericks is the best in the country this year. But Leah O'Connor, she is the one that has dominated and has a very fine chance of potentially making it to the world championships. NCAA champion Leah O'Connor has learned to trust her instincts in order to create the perfect outcome. I think in order for it to go the way that I want it to, I just have to be authentic and do the things that I've done in the past and just stay true to myself and be a top athlete um, and trust my fitness and trust my training. I've put in a lot of hard work, a lot of hours, uh, and, and I'm ready for this. I know that I am, so just staying calm, staying poised, doing the things that I know to do, trusting the process, um, and, and having fun. <laughs> that's, that's my mom's last piece of advice before I go into anything. She just reminds me to, to have fun. I mean, if I'm not doing that, then, you know, what's the point? So just enjoying it and um, embracing everything. So, yeah. Well, this is an athlete who could wind up winning the whole thing as well as Leah. This is Courtney Ferrix of the University of Missouri at Kansas City, who has just st shown steady, steady improvement in her years at college. And hats off to her, she's still a junior, but she has the fastest collegiate time in the country this year of nine minutes and 32 seconds, and that is the 12th best in the world. And Colleen Quigley, you can see her title there that she's won. She's got excellent speed. She's run a 429 mile, can be a factor late in the race, and has been working at the steeplechase now for three years. And Dwight, let me add this quickly in the race to keep an eye on. Yesterday here at the event, Leah, uh, Leah O'Connor fell on the stands and landed on her coccyx, coccyx, and they have worked with her, the physio people and the, the trainers to try and make sure she's okay. And she said, yes, I am, and we'll start. So let's see. It was supposedly a pretty bad fall. So uh, she's out there and is a warrior and was the MVP of the Big Ten Track and Field Championship. She led her team, Michigan State, to the collegiate title of the Big Ten and, and winning three different distance races, including this one. And she is a front runner, which seems as though the better of our steeplechasers for the U.S. have all been front runners. Jenny Simpson, Emma Coburn, and Leah O'Connor all like to go out there, forge their own pace, basically dare anybody to come with them. O'Connor's quite a story. Uh, she grew up in a farm in a small community, had 800 uh, in her high school, and wound up participating in track and field, and did well in the beginning. Dad was a two-miler in high school and wound up taking over the family's dairy farm, yet continued to run. Mom was a 400 meter runner in junior college and she kind of came into those genes and, and showed ability finishing sixth as a freshman in the state championships in Michigan in the 800. She is uh, an NCAA indoor champion this year in the mile running 427. So the wheels are there and if she's healthy, it's maybe not a worry what happened yesterday if she's feeling good. Leah O'Connor continues to lead as we so often see her do over Colleen Quigley and Rachel Johnson right behind her. Still very close. She hasn't broken away. Maybe just testing how she feels. She's now had a chance to be over a number of barriers and the water jump. Took the water jump perfectly. And, and Larry, you know this uh, certainly better than I do, but in my observation, this is a highly technical event. And when you have to blend that technique over the barriers and the water jump along with the endurance that it takes to one, run this race. It really takes a special type of runner to do it effectively. Well, you're right, Dwight. It's certainly different than getting out there and just monitoring how you feel and trying to lay into it in the last couple of laps or whatever the distance is. Uh, it, and you're monitoring more carefully, uh, I think. And I, I ran this event and I ran, you know, 5,000 in the mile and so forth. But you're monitoring more ca carefully Am I husbanding my resources effectively? Because if I misjudge and a lap and a half to go, I'm dead. These barriers get bad and they get high and they don't move. And uh, I remember once feeling utter fatigue. I had absolutely gone out too hard and I fell in the water jump. I, I was so conscious of it. I said, I'm not gonna fall, I'm not gonna fall. And I could barely make it up to the water jump and I went face first in. That last hurdle I thought was gonna take me about three seconds to even get over. It was that long and tough. So you really are in tune with where you are and how much you have left. Let's step aside for a moment and uh, catch you up on the shot put competition from Wednesday. Back to the steeplechase with about three and a half laps remaining. 
And Leo Connor has been leading the entire time. That is Freerix right with her, Dwight. And Rachel Johnson on the outside from Baylor with the green shorts. And Marissa Howard from Boise State have been up there running virtually together since the first lap. They're clicking off a pace of about nine minutes and 40 seconds. And they have run, uh, if you go to their best, about eight seconds, six seconds better in earlier competitions this outdoor season. And you can tell how congested it is still late in the race. Five or six people comfortable. I think Lee is just doing what she has to and counting on her superior faster mile speed than the other ladies. And at some point in time, she'll step on the gas. Let's see if that happens. I will tell you, I've been monitoring her technique very closely, especially over the water jump. I had a coccyx injury back in my, my career, and I will tell you, it makes your hamstrings very tight. You're very tentative. You tend to maybe lean forward a little more than you should. It's tough to maintain normal posture until the until the damage is, is healed. And boy, they've really slowed it up now. She just is almost running in place on that back stretch. You can see the flags are really unfurled. They, uh, wind has really picked up into their face on that back stretch. We started out the afternoon with it not so bad, but it, it's right back to where it's been these last couple of days. Very tough on that back stretch, and that we will see that in a lot of the other events as we go forward this afternoon. You know, Courtney Freerix, um, with the ponytail there in the yellow top, has been running on the edge of lane two. You really run extra distance by the time you add up all the turns in this race. You're going around that bend of 100 meters 14 times, and you don't want to do that. I think running a more uh, intelligent race here is Colleen Quigley on the inside from FSU. Her mile time's only a couple of seconds slower. She's fit and has been running well this season, but she's right on the rail running the least distance possible. And also, those little surges where she goes up to her shoulder and then drops back, that has to take something out of you as well. Right, right. and you know, to, sometimes to go around somebody to do it takes even an extra a little bit of distance that you're covering. You want to run as close to the rail in a distance race as you possibly can. Don't just run beside somebody if you don't have to in lane two. On the back stretch once again, the O'Connor. Under the teeth Frerich. of that wind, and Frerichs again and up on the shoulder and then appears to look as though she wants to pass and then backs off. A good example of the wind out there a little bit is, is look at the ponytails as they kind of fly around a bit. Now they're, they're going to move because of the motion, but they're not necessarily resting on the back either. When we come up, we have just a lap and a quarter to go at this point, and I expect things to heat up here. Well, Leah O'Connor, unlike what she did in the semifinals, certainly isn't getting away from the rest of the pack. There are easily four athletes in this event right now, five that are in contention and can still make a move to win the title. The hurdles, two and a half feet high. That water jump to clear is 12 feet. That's why everybody steps in it. And now it's calling quickly of Florida State that has come up on her inside. Eight minutes and 19 seconds with a lap to go. And you can see these two ladies definitely have something left here. Well, they picked up the pace, they're dropping. Colleen Friedrich, or Courtney Friedrich for the, for the moment, time. sorry. Let's and Colleen quickly now the goes stretch. to the lead, but Leo Connor isn't gonna just relinquish it that easily. We may see these two going stride for stride down the finishing stretch. Two barriers and a water jump remaining. Both anticipated that hurdle well. They didn't lose momentum, which if you have to stutter step, you do. You're about five or six steps away when you know whether you're moving in, in proper stride, so you don't have to mince your steps. Quigley really made a move off that water jump. She had the much better water jump. I don't think Leo O'Connor has an answer. It's Colleen Quigley. She just needs to clear this last barrier, and the senior from Florida State is gonna deny Leo O'Connor a repeat title, and then Courtney Freerich also goes by Leo O'Connor. It's gonna be Colleen Quigley winning it for the Seminoles. Courtney Freerich finishing second, and Leah O'Connor hanging on for third. Excellent time to a very fine last lap of about 70 seconds is turned in there. And she goes under 9.30 to boot. That time moves her up to the 11th fastest time in the world this year. Watch the move here. And she did, she anticipated that very well and powered off 
the water jump. It's one foot in, and the next one is out onto dry land. And it's a great place to try and pick up momentum. And she did. Congratulations to Florida State and Colleen Thanks. Quigley. This event has only been run for about a decade, but Colleen Quigley runs the number five time all time collegian. She gets the 10 points for Florida State. Courtney Friedrichs come up, comes up for second place. Leo O'Connor hanging on for third, and the very excited winner is with Jill. Very emotional winner is with me. Technically, what were you working on in that particular race? Oh my gosh, the first mile felt really super relaxed. Like, I was just working on my form and trying to stay clear. The worst thing that could happen is you trip. So I just wanted to be really clear of the barrier. Sorry, I can't breathe yet. And then I knew that last K, especially last 800, was going to be tough. And Courtney definitely challenged us when we need to be challenged. She was really tough that way in the end of the race. Coming off that last water jump. What did you say to yourself making that final move? I can't, even, I can't even tell you. I've been dreaming about this since sophomore year. I had to sit out last year. And this is just really special. I was just thinking, I feel great. I'm going for it. I look up. I see I've got it. It's like the best feeling in the world. Go take your victory lap. Thank you. Well, the Seminole from St. Louis, who just graduated with honors and a degree in, diet, in dietetics, she will be at the Nationals in just a couple of weeks.